because the power of God is going to be so strong when we come together corporately. I promise you can feel it now. I, you, I guarantee you right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, it's kind of like, whoa, you feel like standing at attention. Even as I'm talking, it even seems angelic and like a heaven force is behind me. And what it is, is he the Holy Spirit, the third person in the Trinity. Amen. And he's a person. And he's real. He's sitting right here with all of us right now, but he's living inside of each one of us. Got that? Good. And what happens is it makes us to put service before self. See, as I talk, it's not even about myself. You can tell it even from, like I said, God, like anything. God keeps telling me, so whatever you put your hands on, he keeps telling me that. I hear my mom say, every time you lay your hands on something, something's going to happen. I believe that is in one of the gifts that God has given me. Some people got hooping, somebody got singing, but mine is in these, these big hands you see right here. So anytime they get close to you and I'm teaching, I can just be talking to you in a conversation. I'll give you a good example. I went to class at Chastity today, and I was telling my daughter about the dream or the vision or the translated or transformation God took me to Rocky Mount. I was telling her on the phone, and uh, um, I went to pay for my car out there at Washington, Biloxi, and this lady evidently was looking, listening to my conversation. The woman behind the desk, I said, you listen to my conversation? <laughs> I wasn't talking loud, baby. I mean, she was listening. I, I was in the room behind the glass. I said, wait a minute. I was in the room behind the glass. How did you hear that? She said, I got good ears. <laughs> look, look, young girl, working back there. But let me tell you what happened, though. Let me tell you how good God is. This is, again, God confirming his presence. So she heard me uh, telling my daughter I felt like I was translated. I was there. I was in the sanctuary. And she said, well, I heard you, but my brother died three years ago. And I feel like he came to me and was talking to me. I said, really? You me tell you what you were hearing? Y'all ain't hear me. <laughs> and the Lord began to have me tell her. And she started saying, I, I, and he came, and, and I felt like he was talking with me, and I felt elevated about three. She started talking about three. Y'all know what we do with numbers, right? Three is the number for what? Trinity. And also complex, completion and perfection, like seven, you're right. And she said, whoa. I said, Lord's perfected some things in your life. You've been fearful about some things. And she said, oh. You know, it wasn't about self. What it was, the presence of the what? The Lord, amen. Are you getting what I'm saying here, y'all? So now, if I'm in a marketplace and God can do that, and she overhears a conversation, but God wanted her to hear what she needed to hear, and I said, and because of that, the Lord has matured you, and now your brother, you even felt that your brother said, everything is good, now you can let me go. She said, you're right. And what happened was, what, it got, what this lady, remember when I was God, me talking to this lady Sunday? You remember those visitors? She started feeling the anointing and presence in this place, working behind the cash register. <laughs> God, I thank you right now. In this place, and I told her some other things that, and she's like, whoa. Oh, but it was God. But she was seeing that I was doing it so practical. Watch this, that she knew it was real. Are you hearing me? And I never mentioned his name. Let me try it one more time. Say, y'all missed it. I, I, right away, I wasn't going. Now, Jesus told me to tell you this. But, what, but there was such an anointing and peace. And there was a spirit that was so powerful. And I'm not telling you I mention the name of Jesus now. Make sure you understand this. But what I'm telling you is she knew without a shadow of a doubt this was different. And then she said, you know what you've done, sir? You have confirmed everything because everything you said to me is true. And I said, that's what life is all about, confirming things. Now, why am I telling you all that? Watch this right here. For I know the thoughts. What, what was it? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of what? To give you a what? And a what? Give us that other one real quick. I love going over stuff. For I know the plans. Here we go. Here's the one I want. For I know the plans I have for you. Everybody say plan fulfilled. Said the Lord, they are plans for good and not for what? To give you a what? And a what? And a hope, all right? Here's the objective of the teaching. For every believer to simply understand. Watch it. I love these objectives. Y'all, I thank God every day that I give objectives. 
I know you like good preaching, but ain't nothing like getting a good objective for. For every believer to simply understand how to experience the fulfillment of God's plan, what? In your life. How many folk know God got a plan in your life? Or for your life. What how about your English? Whatever you want to say. Or for your life. You know, that's what it, God has a plan for your life. He didn't put you on this earth without a purpose and a plan. But you got to believe it. So, but what happens? How do people get off track? I'm going to prove it to you how. Now, take me to my verse in Second Chronicles that we did last week. I want to show you one verse, and there's one thing I want to teach, and then we're going to go to Genesis, and after we do that, we're going to go home. Amen. I want you to just say, everybody say amen. amen. Really, you got to get this. Because what's happening is the things that God is depositing, they're so powerful and they're so loaded with, with the power and the ideas of God, you got to be ready to take it in and move with it. Now, if you look at me funny, like, what in the world pastor talking about? Then you're missing where I am. I said, I'm blind to stuff that's shadow thinking. You got to get ready to enlarge your territory in your thinking. God's got great things planned for your life this year. And it's going to be sweet. I just spoke something. If you grab that there, you know what the problem is? Too many of us. You know what? No. Claudette, take me back to the verse I wanted them to read that I read last, um, uh, Jeremiah, but the breakdown of it. Okay. I want y'all to read that right now. This is the breakdown of that verse. We all, look, we're all encouraged by a leader who stirs us to move what? How many folks want to move ahead? Okay, that's what that verse, Jeremiah 29, 11 means. So, uh, here, someone who believes, someone who believes we can do the task he has given and who will be with us all the way. God is that kind of leader through the Holy Spirit. Everybody say the Holy Spirit. It's good stuff, I'm telling you. But see, y'all got to understand who God is in your life. You got to quit thinking God is God only when you got a problem or into something. Everybody want God when they got a problem. I'm telling you right now, welcome to life. You can always have a problem or a situation. But God wants us to have him just because he's God. You know, don't make God big when you got a problem. <laughs> Keep God big all the time. Make him bigger than your joy. Bigger than your peace. <laughs> he's always bigger than any problem. Amen. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. Now, watch this right here. I know you read this already, but look what he did. And he, he has given you and who will be with you all the time. God is that kind of leader. He knows the future and his plan for us are good and full of what? How many folks know God got a good plan for your life? I was talking to a lady that called me. It's amazing. I have people hit me up on Facebook now, Facebook Messenger, Messenger that want me to be their daddy. I'm good with it, though, because what it means is they have a respect. You get it? You know, can I call you father or is it okay if I call? I'm good with that. You get it? Because not so much they want me to be their biological daddy. It want me, I'm talking about I've had three folks this week that hit me up, and it blessed my soul. And guess what? I said, I'm going to father your life. I'm going to father your soul. And the anointing that's on my life to make sure my children are taken care of, it's going to hit your life, and you won't be denied anything. Y'all got to catch it. I don't say, well, here you go. What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about spiritual connection. Everybody say spiritual. You got this? I mean, literally. And I said, Lord, what is this all about? He said, people are thirsty for integrity. You get it? Get it? They're thirsty for integrity. They want to know that you are living what you're talking about. Y'all come on, somebody. I'm a man just like you, but I got my mind made up. If I'm going to be an example for you, I got to live this thing. Hey, Pastor, well, you got to be doing something wrong. Everybody can find something if you're looking for it. But at the end of the day, I know who I'm pleased, how pleased I am in the sight of God. I, you mean, how are you pleasing God? But doing what the Holy Spirit plans for my life each day. Okay, here's the next part I want to get to. Go ahead. Everybody said good and full of hope. As long as God, who knows the future, provides our what? Wow. And goes with us as we fulfill what? <laughs> when you talk about that, what do y'all hear? Everybody say his agenda. Uh-huh. Yeah, provides our agenda, which is his agenda to me when he provides it. God, with, God goes with us as we fulfill his mission. Anytime I see the word mission, I love that. Because, again, a lot of y'all know I'm retired military. So that we, we heard mission for years. 
you know, um, you know, when I went to the ranks as an officer, they would always tell us, you know, now here's the mission for today. And even working in civilian personnel, whatever you do, you do, it, people got different objectives. But, you know, to understand how to carry out a mission, you better understand your mission. With this election year that's going on right now, y'all better make sure you know God. Because I'm seeing everything. You get it? Right now, it don't matter whether you're black, white, blue, racist or not racist. <laughs> this, what I'm seeing right now, I know this is going viral. You better make sure you know who the real leader is in our lives. Wow, I know some of y'all don't care because you're like, I ain't going to vote no way. You get it? But that's why you can't talk about nothing because you got to vote for something. Too much went through for everybody to have a chance to vote, okay, and have a voice. I don't know why I said that, but I need to say it anyway. We can have boundless what? I thought that was good. You know, how many folks want boundless hope? That's all tied up in Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm going to bless y'all when real good what God gave me. Look, this does not mean that. Now, here's my favorite part about this. This is my favorite part of everything. This does not mean that we will be spared pain, suffering, or hardship, but that God will see us through to a glorious conclusion. Lord, have mercy on her. Take a picture of that or something. You, am I making sense? There's more on the next slide. Let me see. Everybody said glorious conclusion. So you're not going to be, see a lot of times we think, here's what I found out. When I first got saved, I thought that since I got Jesus in my life now, I'm not going to have any problem. I did. I, I was ignorant. I mean, anybody who found out, well, Lord, I've been going, I've been to church for three Sundays in a row. Why am I still having situations? Well, God said, what happened the last 15 years that you wasn't coming? No. <laughs> Real talk. I'm talking about me. When I first, got, I mean, when I really got serious about God, I was like, man, I'm doing all this. God see me doing all this good stuff. What God does, he uses this. Amen. Y'all taking a picture of that? Oh, let me make sure I get up there beside it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Especially this part right here. Amen. Looking real good. Looking like a teacher. Amen. Everybody say, this is so sweet. This is sweet 16. How many folks heard of sweet 16 teaching? Amen. This right here is sweeter than the honey on a honeycomb. That's what the word of God says. His word is sweeter than the honey on a honeycomb. Amen. Now, this is sweet right here. So when you find out that you will not be spared suffering, pain, or hardship, you know why? Because Jesus wasn't spared that. And Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, you can go through some of the same things I went through. But guess what? I'm going to see you to the end. Everybody say, God's sweet plan. How many folks know God got a sweet plan for you? Look, plan to give you hope. And a future. So don't let suffering, pain, or hardship make you think that God plan is still not sweet for your life. Because what he's, what he's doing, he's really, and I say this all the time, he's teaching us to really trust him. You get it? Trust and obey. Because I'm hard-headed. I don't know about you. I, really, I admit I am hard-headed. But when I let go of my stubbornness and hard-headedness and realize that God had a plan for me before I was even formed in my mother's womb, then I'll take 20, 30 years trying to figure that out when I could have gotten this in my 20s. Now, I want my grandkids to get it early. I mean, really. I, I want to make sure that your grandkids get it early also. Or your children. Some of you got children our grandkids' age. I want them to get this stuff that God has for us as far as understanding him early. I want them to understand that if they're bullied in school, they're blessed by God. Are you hearing me? And don't let, some, let them think like being bullied that they're weak because they're not like somebody else. Amen. And a lot of that got to do with how we, you know, how we teach the thing. But the God we, but that God will see us through to a, I like that, glorious conclusion. What do you think when you hear glorious con con conclusion? What do you think? What? I don't mind. What did somebody say? Respect it in. Good. I'm just talking to you. What else? Real quick. Happy? Yep. Got it? See, that's, that's the whole spirit telling you that. That's not you. Victorious. Eh? I'm glad you said that. And here's my transition right here. Go to uh, our verse, and I'm going to show you what God showed me. We're going to Jehoshaphat. One more time. Let's go to Second Chronicles uh, 20, 20th. 
chapter. They're getting a, y'all remember we were there last week? And I'm just going to read this part of it. This is Jehoshaphat. They're, they're about a whole bunch of folks that come after them. A bunch of suffering, pain, <laughs> and hardship is coming at them. Jehoshaphat tells the people, let's fast and pray. Children, grown-ups, women, men, they got everybody together. I said, guess what? Let's see the plan that God has for us. <laughs> we know he got a plan of hope and a future, and his future is not for us to be destroyed. That's pretty much what Jehoshaphat and them did right here. Amen. Okay, now watch this. You got to read this from the beginning in this chapter, but I just want to go back to this one verse. And y'all know the end of this, God ambushed the enemy. That's what he did. He ambushed the enemy. That's what God did. I'm just kind of going telling you a story, but I'm going to go back to this one thing. And he said, hearken ye all Jerusalem. What happened was while they were praying, the Spirit of God came on Jehazah, I think it was. Some, one of the people that were fasting, the Spirit of God came on him, and he began to speak. He began to prophesy. He began to talk. He began to release words. He began to let go of information, however it is, but he began to say some things that put stuff in order. He said, hearken ye all Jerusalem, and ye inhabitants of, of Judah, and ye Judah is praise, and inhabitants, <laughs> that's good, that's what Judah means, praise, right? Inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thy king Jehoshaphat. Thus said the Lord unto you, be not afraid or dismay by reason of all this hardship, pain, and suffering. It looks like, look like it's coming at you. This great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but what? It's God, the Lord. You got, we got that in the New Living Translation? We got that. I just want to read that just in case. Um, so we can make it plain. If not, anybody got a New Living Translation already pulled up? There it is. Look, he said, listen to Zinka, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. Isn't it amazing God always tell you to listen? Anytime God say, listen, what comes by hearing? What he's saying is, let your faith kick in. Because faith comes by hearing, hearing by what? Okay, so for us to hear, we got to do, to do what? That's God activating your faith. You get it? So when he's saying, listen, he said, your faith should jump to attention. You should be like, oh, God's getting ready to say something. That's why when you come in and hear this teaching, you should be like, everything else, shut up. I'm talking, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against what? I wasn't talking to you personally. I'm saying the stuff inside of you that's talking to you. Because even though you listen to me right now, there's a lot talking to you on the inside of you. You're either thinking about what you're going to do at work tomorrow, thinking about what you're going to do when you get with the kids at home, thinking about I got to wash clothes, um, I'm, I'm still going to get something to eat, I'm going to go by this place, all this stuff is speaking. I'm just telling you what it is. It includes me as I'm standing here right now. There's a lot of stuff coming in my mind, but I'm listening to what God is saying. So what God say, hey, it is what it is. This is who I am. He says, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Wow. By this mighty what? I love that translation. For the battle is not yours, but what? So since the battle is not ours, it's God. How many times, here's what I want to tell y'all that God told me, Brian. How many times, Wilma, have you heard folks say you got to pick your battles? Dr. Shanita, has that ever happened to you? In your lifetime, how many times folks say you got to do what? Pick your battles. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. What's up, man? I'm serious. Look. How many times we heard, pick your, man, I was meditating on this from last week, and God told me, Carlton, I don't need you to say pick your battles anymore, because the battle is not yours, and I hadn't changed. I'm talking about God, right? He's the same God yesterday, today, what? I didn't get this out of no book. I heard the Lord speak to me in my relationship with him. He said, from now on, you tell my people what I just told you. I said, sure, God. You really want me to do it? He said, tell them. What if they all don't receive it? He said, you receive it. You get it? Because he said, well, I said, you know, Lord, God, people still going to be going through stuff and pain and I'm teaching this, all this kind of stuff coming at my mind, right? Y'all got to catch this now. He said, tell them to start picking their victories. I get on this side of the room over here. Y'all, 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 let me try. I get over here. I'm going to go home out there. Let me try it one more time. He said, tell them to start picking their victories. 
Because the battle is not yours. Let me try one more time. We fight not against flesh and blood, but against what? Okay, maybe I'll get it, get, maybe get it this way. It's in 1 Corinthians. I, I, I forget where it is, but he said, but what can separate me from the love of God? I think that is. I think that's that chapter, but if you get down to the end, he says, well, stay with me now. I want to make sure I get around. No, no, I'm, here's, he said, but, but thank be to God who has given us, y'all ain't heard it, the victory through our Lord and Savior. So if he's given me the victory, guess what I need to do? Pick my victories and quit picking battles. Oh, Lord, I mean, let me try it one more time. So I was talking to my baby this morning. I was talking to Marilyn. I said, you know what? She said something to me. I said, you know what, girl? What you just said to me, I just picked my victory. You know, somebody get up, you mad or angry. I'm going to tell them what I think about them. God so said, I don't need you to pick a battle. I need you to pick the victory. Because you got authority over what you're thinking that don't line up with what I have planned for your life. Y'all better get this right here, man. Look at y'all sitting here in Mississippi at Victory International Christian Center. Right here, this close, intimate setting, and God had released something that should change your life forever. Well, Pastor, I heard other folks say this and other folks say that. I don't care what they say. I heard the Lord say the battle that you're trying to go into is not even yours. And so since Jesus killed, got rid of the ultimate battle that was going against all of us, sin. Said, oh, death and grave, where is your victory. Where is your staying? Come on, y'all. Are you hearing me? That's the ultimate battle right there. And he conquered that. Watch this now. When they nailed him to the cross, kapow, kapow. You get it? Had a crown on his head, bleeding for me and you. I wasn't even born yet. I already had victory. I was born into sin, but I got born again into a savior. Oh, come and try it one more time. I wasn't even born yet, but he knew the plan that he had for me. A hope and a future, not disaster. And what he was talking about was sin. Amen? Are y'all getting this thing? I'm telling you, God, I said, Lord, I thank you for what I'm experiencing in the 61st year of my life. To get to this point now where I can speak boldly and always smoke boldly, smoke boldly, but to speak and know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to do everything that we're saying and, get, and no hold up now. So I'm telling you right now, you might be just going to throw your hands up in the air and say, I'm getting all these victories right here. No, I said it wrong. You're not getting them. You already got them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Good God Almighty on high. Lord, have mercy. Come on, come on, y'all. Come on, let's get the religion off of us. And let's just go start celebrating in church when we know that God has said something so clear. Well, my rent do. They about to do this. He broke my heart. She broke my heart. God said, pick your victories. See, what it does, what it does, Brenda, it changes the way we think. So instead of us thinking defeat, oh, God, I thank you. We start thinking, I got the victory. You get it? We, we get rid of that defeated mentality. What can separate me from the love of God? You get it? He loves me so much that everything that the enemy comes and say and accuse me of, but Jesus said, I already got that. You know, tell that, tell that to the accusing of the, 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 the brothers. What, what is it then? Yeah, the accuser of the brothers. Amen. Y'all got that? I, I'm just stuck on that right now. Got excited about it, Lee. Uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, man. Amen. Just throw your hands up in the air one more time. So I'm picking my victories. So why are you sitting here right now? I'm talking to some of you all that were on your job and complaining about it. Right now, you need to thank God that you got the greatest victory in the marketplace. You got a job. Are you hearing me? And let me tell you right now, so all them folk that's causing you pain, suffering, and hardship, you need to know that God is using them so you can make it to your glorious conclusion. Lord, I'm going to try it one more time. You just start calling, okay, your name pain, your name hardship. Are you hearing me? But guess what? I'm picking my victory. You're not even a battle. I'm not going to lose no sleep over you. 
Matter of fact, in about three months since God has changed my thinking about how you mess with me on this job that God has blessed me with, now what God is going to do, he's going to promote me in the presence of your thinking because you're going to be looking at me like you don't look like you usually look. You don't look depressed. You don't look like you're about to cry. You're not talking to the person that you've been talking to that you thought wouldn't tell me what you said about me while you on the job. They say you don't even give them any information anymore. The only thing you give them is positive words. It don't mean you don't see the negative stuff, but guess what? I got too many victories. And when I start counting my victories, I can count my blessing. And when I count my blessing, I start saying, I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field. I was blessed when I came in this building. And since I'm in this building, everything in this building belongs to God. And the last time I checked, I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. And no, I'm good. I'm good. God. Wow. Amen. 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 I said, Amen. I said, Amen. Through pain and suffering, God gave us an anointing and He named it victory. International God, I thank you. <laughs> there are many names he could have gave us for this place. But y'all don't know the pain and suffering, what we were up against 20 years ago. And then out of it, I said, the Lord has given me a ministry. And he, called, he said, call it victory. I don't care what all the other stuff I add on. It's the first thing that's there. So every time I say I'm going to victory, I declare victory in my life. Amen. Y'all, see, you ought to thank God for victory. V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. Lord have mercy. Hosatashata. Yeah, I declare seven victories over your life before tomorrow this time. Hey, hey, no, oh God. Oh God, I thank you right now. Yeah, it's all about that hand. It don't matter whether it's the left or the right. But if these hands get on you, baby. Oh, God, I thank you right now. See, you got to understand, this is God's purpose for my life. Take that religion off it, see. See, you've been letting folks lay hands on you because of religion. But what about because of relationship? You got to lay it this way. You got to look that way. Oh, all that. Shut up. Amen. Okay, y'all are okay. All right. I'm sorry, son. I, I shouldn't use that's a bad word. Shut up. I know some of you say amen. Can y'all give God one more hand for that? I'm going to show you one other thing. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's it. You got it. Lord, I've been working hard all day long. Yeah, but you got the victory, baby. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Lord, I bless your name tonight. I thank you that we don't have to pick any more battles. I thank you, God, that we're going to pick our victories. Jesus, you gave us such an awesome victory when you died on Calvary. And then you got up in three days and you told everything that was working against us. It has no authority. Lord, I bless your name right now. I believe the people really caught this, God. People that's been feeling defeated are now feeling delivered. People that have been worried. They realize that the plan for you that you've given us is a plan of hope, not a plan of disaster. God, we, we see people, just we see increase in this place. Yeah, yeah, take, take me there. I'm praying, but go on, take me there, Claudette, real quick. I saw it. I wasn't, I wasn't going to let them get it, but... When I pray, increase the Holy Ghost and read it to him anyway. Go ahead. Then the Lord said, the Lord had a plan for man. <laughs> Real quick. I, I was going to not even do this, but when I, when I did that, God said, no, just read it to him. Then the Lord said, let us make man in our image. Look what God's plan was for you. Right from the beginning. His plan was to put us in his image. Y'all got it. It's a spiritual thing. We're speaking spirits. 
He said, let me put some spirits down there in my image, but I'm going to give them a body for the spirit to dwell in. Because a spirit on earth without a body is illegal. So guess what? When you die, like my dad, my mom and dad are dead, I'm going to see them again. But in the book of Revelation, guess what? When we see each other again and everything is put back the way God wanted, they're going to have a new body. Y'all going to understand this. You're going to have a new body. The only reason you die is so you can get rid of this old body. That's why he said you have to be born uh, of the So when, when he comes back, it's all up in the Bible. I'm going to see you. We're going to repopulate the earth. Y'all not going to be floating up on some planet somewhere. You're going to be on planet earth. Y'all read it for yourself in the book of Revelation. I don't debate with folks about it. It's there. It's all in the Bible. Paul talks about it. It's real simple. And people keep wondering, well, what am I going to do? I thank God for Jesus Christ. Now, you got that? He died. That's why he got up, so we can see we can have new bodies. Let me try it one more time. The reason he got up out of the grave wasn't just to be getting up. You get it? Those that die in Christ will get up in Christ. Y'all got to get this. So when he got up, because if he hadn't gotten up, then all that sickness and all that sin would have been what kept him in the grave. So guess what? He took all this stuff on, gave us the victory. So guess what? We're going to get up, and we're going to have a body just like his. New. No high blood pressure, no diabetes, no kidney problem, no anger problem, no oh, woe is me problem. Your whole mind. I'm telling y'all, it's going to be a glorious conclusion. It really is. You got to believe this. That's why you got to thank God. So that's why I tell people, I was telling some guy, he kept saying to me, we have, but there's so many other things to believe. So many folk been coming to me, you know. And I said, man, you know what? The only way you can get to God. He said, I believe in God. He kept telling me that. But he said, I kept telling him, I believe in God. So yesterday I was talking to somebody. He said, I believe in God. I said, yeah, but no man can get to the Father except through the Son. I said, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are one. What separates us is the fact that all these other folks and what they believe in, the man they believe in is still in the grave. But what separates us is the fact that who we believe in got up, Jesus. Yeah, but he was just a man. Yeah, he was a man, but he was God. You say, but you don't have, and I ain't talked too much long after that. I said, hey, bro, only thing you got to do is believe. I can't make you believe. But I'm just going to tell you one day, guess what? You're going to die just like everybody else. You're right. You're going to believe, but I'm going to have a whole new body. But I won't be guilty of not sharing this with you. I wasn't trying to make him receive. He said, I understand, Reverend Carter, but I just know, you know, everybody had talked to me. But I believe in God. He kept saying, I believe in God. I said, yeah, okay. But I said, you got to believe in Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're all in one. Y'all okay? Real talk, y'all. I mean, it is what it is. You don't have to argue with folks. It's a choice. NLT version. Go ahead. Go ahead and put it up there for me real quick so they can see this. Is that it? Okay. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that what? Scurry along the ground. Just look, look what God did. He had a plan to put us over everything. And then go ahead real quick. Next verse. I'm going to show you something. So God created human beings in his own image in the image of god he created what male and what okay hey, y'all fill in the blanks all the other stuff that we go through now all the other stuff we come up with that's all because of what adam did y'all gotta realize that's the only reason and god has put it back in place when jesus died for us he gives us choice everybody say male and female okay here's what i want to get to though here's what here's where the victory is then god blessed them and said be fruitful. Remember I was talking about the increase? Multiply, fill the earth, and what? Now, I know um, King James says take dominion. Keep it right there in the New Living Translation. Look, reign over what? In other words, God said just reign over things because I reign over you. Now, you would look, right in the beginning, God gave us victory. And, but here's the thing as I come to a conclusion. God gave us a great plan. But you got to realize that since the devil opposes God, he's going to always try to introduce us to another plan. I wish we could have ended on that victorious move we was on earlier. But so as we come in for a landing, you got to realize in the midst of all the victory, victory we're talking about, the devil is going to try to show you a different victory. But it's not God. You okay? Everybody say in the name of Jesus. The one point I got from this teaching tonight, say that, is to 
to pick my victories. All right. Give God a great hand, praise. I'm done. I'm done. Praise be to God. And for you that are web streaming, pick your victories. <laughs> Amen. Give God a standing ovation. Come on, y'all. You need not fight in the battles anymore. The battles are not yours. They belong to God. You've only got one thing to do. Y'all afraid to say it? You afraid to say it? Sopranos. Altos. Tenors. Sopranos. Altos. Sopranos. Yeah, everybody. Give Jesus a hand, praise. Come on, baby. Amen. Come on. You may sit down. <laughs> hey, listen, if you're here tonight, if you're here tonight, we thank God for you. <laughs> I'm so glad y'all are here tonight. Would y'all continue to pray for me and pray for us as we take on the victory of pastor in two churches in two different states. But thank be to God for the victory. I'm going to try it again for the victory that gives us the authority to go out because God has raised up a place such as this and to God be the glory. Amen. Come on, man. Amen. To God be the glory. Nobody but him. Yeah, that was awesome, Pastor. Yeah, I couldn't wait yeah. to get that out, girl. I thank God every day that he has not um, put me here on this earth to live a complicated life. Amen. I remember that. Yeah. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Yeah, Keep shoot. it simple. I mean, yeah. you know. Keep it simple. <laughs> Anybody here having a birthday today? This week? Anniversary? Oh, Babies? Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. Okay. Get yeah, your hands up high. Marilyn want to make sure she gets you those CDs. Amen. You too, Miss Emma? Miss Emma? Wait, Miss, she ain't know. You, did you know? What, what are you talking about someone? <laughs> you, <laughs> <laughs> I a show like that one time. Yeah. Uh, Will the real... Uh, Pastor McCarter, please stand up. Oh, we've oh, She want to double up on you. Oh, you haven't. Who else had a birthday or anniversary? Get your hands up so we can get them to oh, you. Oh, let me go there. Thank you. Um, Joyce, yeah, it's your. Right. When is it? Sunday. This past Sunday, Sunday. This coming Sunday. All right. Oh, Good, yeah. girl. Girl, I remember when you was in your forties. Yeah. Huh. Right. Yes, well, we've been around a long time. Congratulations, dear. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good. We got everybody on this side. I hope y'all enjoyed the teaching tonight, man. Really applied to your life. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Joyce over here, Maryland. Who else on this side besides Joyce? Having a birthday, anniversary, or good. How many birthdays are we had in here tonight? This week? Sabrina, when's your birthday? Sabrina. Yesterday. Oh, shut. Did I wish you happy birthday? Happy birthday. She look, she's like, I don't know, but I said, your birthday was yesterday? Yeah. Friday, okay, hey, amen, all right. Nothing and else, no, no yours anniversaries, tomorrow? no, no. Um, I hope y'all did something special. Anything, anything you want to celebrate. Well, happy birthday to you. Birthday, we, we, anything you want to celebrate, because I got a lot of CDs and things. <laughs> some of pick stuff to celebrate, pick your victory. How many folks going to pick some victories, though? Get it? Mm. Get it? So when you get tested on p picking something other than a victory, you're going to go right back to your victory, amen. It's awesome. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, amen. I remember that teaching. Yeah. Bold believing. That was a good one. Yeah, that's that was from a while back. Yeah, bold believing. Pick your victory. <laughs> good. Uh, anybody here for the first time tonight? Anybody was here for the first time? I don't think everybody looks good. Amen. Bless you, baby. If you're web streaming tonight for the first time, thank you, and we appreciate you. Continue to tap in to us by way of web streaming, and we thank God for modern technology. Amen. Amen. Again, Victor, we thank God for you all. Thank you. Let's pray for it. We all pray for the weather also. This is supposed to be coming in here. Let's pray for the weather. The weather also in North Carolina. This is supposed to get a lot of snow. Amen. A lot of snow.
of snow. <laughs> but rain here. So it'll be rain and wind. But we can, con we can change the weather pattern. Amen. Y'all remember that? We talked about that. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, hey. What does she got, babe? No snow. It would be nice to get some cool weather around here. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Y'all should have seen Pastor last night. I almost took a picture to show you, George Moses. Because <laughs> she gave both of us a cap Dallas cowboy hat with a little snowball on top. He was lying in bed with the snow with the hat on his head, long sleeve pajamas, top to bottom, a robe and socks under the covers. I said, it's not even that cold in here. And she had a high flash and was kicking stuff off. And I said, your temperature is different than mine. <laughs> Hey, brothers, don't worry about it. Your days stay married long enough and your wife start having hot flashes. You're going to be just like me walking around with your robe. And some of you wives that are there now probably. That was ridiculous. Husband do the I same thing. Really Good luck. I was comfortable, man. They could have called me a snow bunny in bed. Amen. <laughs> so we know it won't nothing happen last night, was it? <laughs> I just said what y'all were thinking. That's all. That's why y'all say, amen, amen. Okay. I was married and legal. Hallelujah. Good luck. <laughs> Lee, that's why y'all love me, man. Y'all love me. Hey, man. You know what? I said I was going to do better. I blew it. I just told you, Nita. Hey, man. I said I was going to do better. I'm trying, y'all. I got to quit saying crazy stuff. Y'all ain't praying hard enough. Look, I'm telling you. Because <laughs> I know some of y'all were thinking, why show us a lot of stuff? You know that? I just say stuff that we think. I would have been thinking that personally. We told nobody, though, but anyway. <laughs> Everybody say I love my pastor. <laughs> With the ass, pastors. <laughs> say I love Jesus. And a merry heart. heart. Do it good. good. Black medicine. We can always laugh at victory. We we'll always be a place of relationship, not religion. And if anybody got any problems with what I said, just check yourself. That's all. Especially when you pull the covers up. <laughs> well, God, you good. <laughs> Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. <laughs> He's good all the time. All the time, all the time. Yes, sir. I guarantee you when Jesus was talking with disciples, and I guarantee you he had conversations like this. I hope y'all don't think that all the disciples walking around Jesus was going, Jesus? I guarantee he had to deal with stuff. He had to deal with Peter cussing. I guarantee you had some of the other ones doing some other things. Y'all got to realize Jesus walked on earth, and they didn't get that he was the Messiah really until he died. The Holy Spirit came back, and I guarantee all of us started coming to them. He really was. The son of God. In the meantime, he was teaching them and showing them how much they needed him in their lives to be transformed. Amen. He had some fun, too. I guarantee Jesus had a sense of humor, man. Because God got a sense of humor. You know why? Because he put up with us. There's no way I can be God and going through all the stuff he's going through and not laugh at some of the stuff that we come up with. Amen. Come on, everybody stand. Come on. Come on, everybody stand. Everybody stand. Yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, we need to give. I'm so excited. Come on. Thank you, everybody. Thank God. You, you're a giver. That's what givers do. Like, amen. Well, I'm going to agree. I don't know what agree. Just come on, bring, bring the uh, bucket so we can give tonight. Did I forget anything, anybody? Um, I know Veronica. I want to, again, uh, Veronica got volunteered a year for the. Um, Mississippi Hospital Association. She volunteers over in Biloxi. No, that's great. And she got a volunteer of the year, which is commendable. And she's part of this family. It's always good. And I know Kelly tonight is, got put in for an award at the IP where she works for. And uh, she's being considered for an award over there tonight. And somebody else got something that I'm forgetting. Lord Jesus had written it down. But if I didn't, if I forget it, I will tell you later. Amen. Let's give me a chance to get Y'all know we're still before 8 o'clock. I'm loving it. Amen. Did you really enjoy the teaching tonight? Yes. How many folks going to pick your victories? Yes, thank God. Good. 
Uh, can I lay hands on five folks right quick? It ain't gonna take long. This, this five, yeah. So, yes, favor, favor, yes, 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 yes. Oh God, thank. Oh shata po ko shala la ma si ke te bo ko shanda da ba ko satana mo ko si ke i ke i te te bo ko shanda la la ba ka sanda ya ko si. You really gonna start picking your victories. You're gonna get promoted this year also. Oh, Oh, Yeah. Check with Sabrina. When God had me say something like that, ask Sabrina how many promotions she's gotten. I saw her. She's probably gone now. Sabrina's still here? Yeah. Oh, Yes, yes, yes. Woman of God. Recreating things. Yes. Come on. Just a hand, just a hand. I'll be here all night if I speak everything God is saying. So when I lay hands on you, whatever the Holy Spirit say to you, receive it. Whatever the Holy Spirit say to you when I lay hands on you, just receive it. Whatever God says, thank you, baby. Yes, yeah, when I lay hands on you, whatever the Holy Spirit say to you, oh, yeah, bless you all. Yeah, this is how we're going home tonight in the name of Jesus. Wow, yes, oh, bless you. Yes, yeah, the presence of the Lord. Yes, yes, she. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to bless you with this. We son. Yeah, that's for my boy. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Whatever the Holy Spirit says to you when I lay hands on you, receive it. Whatever he says to you, come on, bless you. Thank you. Yes, bless you, baby. Whatever God says to you, Thank you yes, yes. Y'all going to start picking these victories, boy. Y'all going to start walking in such victorious life. You got yours already, woman. That's what I'm talking about. Woman told me she got hers already. You know, I'm telling you, you're going to start seeing yourself different, differently. You're going to get up and start look in the mirror and just start looking like I am so victorious in God. Yeah, yeah. Y'all can go as I'm laying hands on you. You don't have to stay. This is the way we end the service. Did I get you? Oh, shamdada boko sa. Yeah, I'll get you again. Bless you, brother. Oh, yes, yes. Yo, this is real. Touch somebody said, this is real. Y'all watch. Watch the change. Watch the shift. Yes, yeah. Whatever the Lord says, when I lay hands on you, receive it. I got it. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Tan, have a victorious royal day at work tomorrow in the name of Jesus. You are my boy there. Yeah, cool.